the circuit that you saw is known as a dark activated sensor circuit. It causes the LED to turn on when there's no or very little light shining upon it. In this video, we're going to talk about how to make that circuit and also how to make a light activated LED circuit. But first, we need to talk about the element that causes this circuit to work in the way that it does. And this is known as the LDR, the light dependent resistors. So we're going to focus on that real quick. So this is the symbol for a resistor. So draw the symbol of a light dependent resistor, enclose the resistor in a circle, and then put two arrows facing towards it, which represents the incoming light shining upon it. Now, when light shines upon the light dependent resistor, the resistance decreases. So let me give you some values that I've measured. So in my living room, when the living room light is turned off, the resistance of the LDR was about 180 to 220 kilo ohms. Now granted, I do have ambient light coming outside of my house because it, I measured this during the daytime, even though my blinds were closed. Because if it's completely dark, the resistance can go up to a million ohms or even more. But when I turn my living room lights on, the resistance dropped to 25K to 40K. So you need to measure the resistance based on the application upon which you want to use the LDR because it can vary widely. Now let's watch a demonstration that shows the effect of light on the resistance of the LDR. So here is the schematic diagram of the dark activated LDR circuit. Let's call this R1, R2, and R3. So R1 is a 220 kilo ohm resistor. R3 is a current limiting resistor, and I set it at 100 ohms to limit the amount of current that's flowing through the LED so it doesn't burn up. Q1 is an NPN transistor, and R2 is the LDR, the light dependent resistor. So we're going to say that when the light is off, the resistance is close to 200K. So let's talk about how this circuit works. R1 and R2, they form a voltage divider. So to calculate the voltage at this point, let's call it point A. It's going to be 6 volts times R2, which is 200 kilo ohms, divided by the sum of R1 and R2, which is 420 kilo ohms. So it's going to be almost 3 volts, but we can round it to, it's 2.86, but let's round it to 2.9 volts. Now, in order to turn on the NPN transistor, we need to have a voltage of 0.6 volts between the base and the emitter. So this is the collector, this is the base, and this is the emitter of the NPN transistor. So to turn uh, that transistor on, we need 0.6 volts between the base and the emitter. The green LED has a voltage drop of 2 volts. So as long as we have a voltage of more than 2.6 volts between the ground and point A, the LED will be on. If VA is less than 2.6 volts, the LED will be off. It's important for you to understand that if you wish to know how this circuit works. So let me write that down. So if VA is greater than 2.6 volts, the LED will be on. And if VA is less than 2.6 volts, based on the resistance values, the LED will be off. So that's why you need to measure the resistance of the LDR when the light is on and when the light is off. So you can use the appropriate R1 value so that you could set it in such a way that VA will be on. I mean, the LED will be on with the right value of VA, or the LED will be off with the appropriate value of VA. So let's see what happens 
when the light is turned on. Because keep in mind, when the light is off, that is my living room light, the resistance of the LDR is 200K. And when that happens, VA is 2.9. And so the LED is on. But let's see when the main light is on, what happens. So we know that the resistance, it drops between 20 and 40K. So let's say that it drops to 30K. What's going to be the new VA value? So it's going to be 6 volts times R2, which is 30K, divided by the sum of R1 and R2, which is 30 plus 220, or 250K. And so the voltage will now be 0.72 volts. As you can see, this is too low to power the LED. The LED requires 2 volts. And to activate the transistor, that requires 2.6 volts. So because VA is small, the transistor will be off. No current will be flowing from the collector to the emitter to activate the LED. So that's how it works. When the light switch is turned on, the resistance of the LDE, I mean the LDR drops. The voltage at point A decreases. It turns off the transistor, which turns off the, the green LED. But when the main light is off, the resistance of the LDR goes back up. So VA goes back to 2.9 volts, turning the transistor on. So current will flow from the battery through the base to the emitter. And only a small amount of current flows through the base of the transistor. But once the transistor is activated, a larger amount of current will flow from the collector to the emitter, turning the green LED on. So hopefully I didn't confuse you with too much information, but it's important to understand that the voltage at point A controls the transistor. If it's greater than 2.6, the transistor will be activated. A very small amount of current flowing through the base to the emitter will activate a larger amount of current that flows from the collector to the emitter, turning the green LED on. And that's why I chose R1 to be so high, because you don't want too much current flowing through the base of the transistor. Otherwise, it can burn out. So that's how you can build a dark activated LDR sensor circuit. But now let's talk about how we can build a light activated LDR circuit, where the LED will turn on when light is shining upon a circuit. So let's uh, look in on a demonstration. To make the light activated LDR circuit, all you need to do is switch R1 and R2. So this resistor here is now the light dependent resistor. It's between the base of the transistor and the collector. And this is our green LED. All of the other values are the same. The only difference is R1. I chose to use a 33 kilo ohm resistor instead of the 220 kilo ohm resistor. And I'm still using the 6 volt battery. So now let's focus on the voltage at point A. Keep in mind, the voltage drop between the base and the emitter is 0.6 volts. The voltage drop of the green LED is 2 volts. So once again, if VA is greater than 2.6 volts, the transistor will be activated and the LED will be on. If VA is less than 2.6 volts, the transistor will be off. So no current will be flown from the collector to the emitter, thus the LED will be in the off state. So now let's talk about when the main light is off. When the main light is off, R2 will be approximately 200 kilo ohms. So let's calculate VA. 
So using our voltage divide equation, it's going to be R1, which is 33 kilo ohms, divided by the sum of R1 and R2, so that's 233 kilo ohms, times the voltage of the battery. So 6 times 33 over 233, that's going to give us a voltage of approximately 0.85 volts. So in this case, VA is less than 2.6, so the LED is off. So thus we can see that when the main light is off, the light emitting diode is off. Now let's consider the alternative when the main light is on. So when the main light is on, the resistance of the LDR is going to decrease. So it's going to drop to approximately, we're going to say 30K. So let's calculate the new VA value. It's going to be the voltage of the battery times R1 divided by the sum of R1 and R2. So that's 30 plus 33, which is 63. So 6 times 33 divided by 63. That'll give us a voltage value of 3.14 volts. So as we can see, when the main light is on, VA is greater than 2.6 volts. So the green LED will be on. So thus we have a light activated circuit. When we turn the main light on, the green LED is on. When we turn the main light off, the green LED is off. So in order to make this circuit, just put the LDR in this position as opposed to this one and make sure you choose the appropriate R1 and R2 values so that you can get the right VA values to turn the circuit on and off. So keep in mind the LDR uh, values will vary based on how much light is shining upon it. So the amount of light intensity that's coming from my living room might be different from what, from your living room if you want to build a circuit. So you need to measure how much light is shining in your living room and what is the resistance values. And then you may need to adjust R1 accordingly in order to make this circuit work. So just keep that in mind. But that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be educational. And um, don't forget to check out my other videos in my electronics playlist.